All right, let's continue our discussion about linear and nonlinear equations and kind of expand upon the simple general definition of linear equations that we learned about in the last few videos. So we already know that variables in linear equations are only raised to the first power. So there are no variables in, in any of the terms of a linear equation that are raised to a power other than one. Secondly, there are no products of variables and no roots of variables within any term in a linear equation. So you don't have two different variables multiplied together, such as x times y in a linear equation. Finally, all unknown variables in a linear equation are not involved in any logarithmic, exponential, or trigonometric functions. So for an example, you can't have a term in a linear equation that has something like cosine of x. So I'm going to give a few examples of linear equations and some examples of nonlinear equations, and we can try to understand what makes each equation nonlinear. So in the first example, we have the equation 4x minus, it should be a minus, 4x minus e to the second power times y is equal to cosine of 3 pi divided by 2. And so although there is a cosine function and the constant sometimes referred to as Euler's constant e, within this equation the unknown variables x and y are not a part of any trigonometric function, exponential function, logarithmic function. They are not multiplied with one another or some other variable, and they're only raised to the first power. So this equation, in fact, is linear. How about this equation? x squared is equal to square root of 3 times, five, uh, times y. Sorry. So in this equation, we have x raised to some power other than 1. So this makes it nonlinear, right? What if we had something like 2x minus 4y is equal to 9? Again, this is linear because x and y are the only two unknown variables and they're not multiplied with one another, they're not raised to any power other than 1, and they're not a part of any logarithmic, exponential, or trigonometric function. So this is linear, right? Let's say we had something like sine of x1 plus x2 is equal to 0. So in this case, we have two unknown variables, x1 and x2. x2 is OK, but x1 is part of a trigonometric function. So therefore, this equation is not linear. What if we had 1 half y minus pi is equal to square root of 3? Well, we have pi, we have a root. But y is just multiplied with a constant, and it's not raised to any other power other than 1. And it's not also involved in any logarithmic, exponential, trigonometric function, so this is a linear equation. What if we had e to the x minus 3y is equal to 5? Well, our variables are x and y. y is OK, but x is in the power of the constant e. So this makes it nonlinear. What if we had cosine pi over 2 times x minus 4y is equal to 1? Well, we do have this cosine, but cosine of pi over 2 is just some value. It's a constant. And so our unknown variables are x and y. They're only raised to the first power, and again, they're not involved in any logarithmic, exponential, or trigonometric functions. So this equation is linear. Finally, I'll do one more. x times y plus z is equal to 1. Well, here we have three unknowns, x, y, and z. But two of our variables are multiplied with one another. So this makes this equation nonlinear. So now let's talk about parametric representations of a solution set and finding particular solutions. The best way I can explain this is through an example. So what if we had 
this equation. x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 6. And we wanted to solve this linear equation. Well, it is in fact linear, right? x1 and x2 are raised only to the first power. There are no products of variables, so x1 and x2 aren't multiplied with one another or with some other variable. And both of the variables are not involved in any logarithmic, exponential, or trigonometric functions. Well, finding the parametric representation of a solution set means to find one variable in terms of the free variable. Now in this equation, x1 and x2, either one can be a free variable. So we can solve for one in terms of the other. So the simplest way is to probably just solve for x1. So if I subtracted 3x2 from both sides, I would get x1 is equal to 6 minus 3x2. Now, what if we just set x2 equal to some value t? And t is just any real number. So then I could rewrite this equation as x1 is equal to 6 minus 3t, where x2 is equal to t, right? This thing right here. And we said t is just any real number. So to find the particular solution, we want to set t equal to some numeric value and solve for x1 and x2. So if we set t equal to 2, well, up here we said that t is equal to x2, or vice versa, x2 is equal to t. So if t is equal to 2, that means x2 is equal to 2, right? And if we plug x2 into this equation, or if we plug t into this equation, we should get a corresponding value of x1. So x1 is equal to 6 minus 3 times either x2 or t. And we get, well, 6 minus 3 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So 6 minus 6, this is 0. So our solution set is simply x1 is equal to 0, and x2 is equal to 2. We can also say that this is the particular solution. Now you could have also solved for x2 in terms of x1. So in this example that we just did, x2 is the free variable. But what if we wanted x1 to be the free variable? Well, we can do that if I scroll down and I rewrite the equation. So x, sorry, x1 plus 3x2 is equal to 6. And if I subtract x1 from both sides, I get 3x2 is equal to 6 minus x1. And then if I divide by 3 on both sides, I get x2 is equal to 2 minus x1 over 3. And here I can set x1, the free variable, equal to any real number that I'll call t. So then this equation becomes x2 is equal to 2 minus t over 3. So what if we had more than two variables? And by that I mean, what if we wanted to solve this equation? x plus y plus z is equal to negative 1. Well, we could do something similar that we did with the above two examples, and we could choose y and z, for an example, to be the free variables. So I'll just say y is equal to s, and s is just some arbitrary letter that I chose to represent any real number. And I could say z is equal to t, which is also just some any real number. So if I solved this equation in terms of the free variables, right, y and z, I would get x is equal to negative y minus z minus 1. And if we substitute these values into this equation, we get x is equal to negative s minus t minus 1. So this right here is the parametric solution of this equation. And so an example of one particular solution and there are many, many solutions to this parametric equation or parametric solution. So I'm going to write parametric 
solution. One, just one particular solution might be S is equal to two and T is equal to two. So if we plug in these values here, X is equal to negative two minus two minus one. Well, negative two minus two minus one is just negative five. 